Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today I'm going to be reacting to Christian audience challenged me with their Bible and I replied using the Bible and Quran. So this video, since it's too long, I'm going to cut it in two parts, one and two. So yeah, without wasting time, let's get into the video. You know, so before you ask the questions, you know, when you came over here, there were a lot of people to welcome you, to bring you up here. There were all the things which were set up, the marketing was done, the planning was done, the delicious food is here. I really, really would like to uh, thank all the volunteers who made this happen. So on behalf of all of us, I'll give them a big hand. Yes. yes, brother, go ahead. You beat me to it. I wanted to thank you all for having us here. It was awesome. Uh, my name is Andrew. Uh, I live nearby. I'm a software engineer. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having us here for the delicious food. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, my question for you is, uh, what do you believe about Jesus? Is he the Son of God? Because that's what I believe. I want to know okay. more about what you believe. Okay, so the question is, what do we believe about Jesus? You believe a Andrew, right? That he's the son of God. What about Muslims? So our book that we go with, right? This is the guidance for all of humanity, the Quran. It mentions about Jesus 25 times. So we say that Jesus, according to Islam, is just a messenger. So it says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 75, it says that Jesus was just a messenger and many messengers passed away before him. Him and his mother, they both used to eat. So what Quran is saying that Jesus is only a human because he was dependent on food and water and oxygen and so on and so forth. Secondly, we say that Jesus performed miracles. You know, just like you have miracles in the New Testament, there are miracles about Jesus in the Quran. You'll be surprised to find out that there are some miracles in the Quran not mentioned in the Bible. One of the miracles is this. So we believe that uh, Jesus' mother Mary, she was a virgin. So when she was about to bring the baby Jesus to her people, she became really, uh, you know, really stressed out that my people are going to accuse me of adultery, fornication and immorality. But she had no choice. She brought the baby out to the people and, and they started to accuse her. At that point, she just remained silent, right? There was no DNA test that time and no modern technology. She remained silent. And baby Jesus, according to the Quran, he started to speak. It says in chapter 19, verse number 30, 31 and onwards, Jesus said, baby Jesus, right, according to the Quran, that I am a servant of God, God has made me a prophet, God gave me a scripture, God made me nice to my mother, God gave me opportunity so I can give charity and I can pray. So these were the words that baby Jesus did. So we say that Jesus raised people from the dead. He gave eyesight to the blind according to the Quran. But every single miracle, it says the Quran that it is by the power of God that Jesus was doing those miracles. So that's the second thing we believe about Jesus. Not as God, son of God, but only as a messenger. And his power is coming from God. Which is also aligning with the New Testament. It says in the Gospel of John chapter 5 verse number 30. Jesus is speaking that I of myself, I cannot do anything. Whatever I hear, I judge and my judgment is true because I seek not my own will but the will of God who sent me. The third thing that we believe on Jesus is that his message. We say that his message is the message of inviting people to the worship of one God. Why is it making noise? Let me come here. So it says in the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 51, Jesus is quoted in the Quran. And, and this is the quotation. Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'budu haza siratam mustaqim. And the translation is this. That verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Worship Him alone and that is the straight path. So according to the Quran, that was the message of Jesus, peace be upon Him, right? That also aligns with the New Testament again. 
according to the gospel of john uh, gospel of mark chapter 12 verse number 28 a person came to jesus and asked him a million dollar question of all the commandments which one is the first the greatest of all the commandments and jesus so the jewish people used to have 613 commandments in the old testament 613 and this person wants to know which one is the best the greatest of all of them and jesus he replied according to the new testament hear o israel the lord thank you hear o israel the lord our god is only one worship him with all your heart mind soul and strength and that is the first commandment so that is what we believe about the mighty messenger jesus peace be upon him but lastly there is a passage in the quran chapter 61 verse number 6 in which god says that jesus prophesied about the coming of a last messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him so we say that was jesus one prophet in a chain of prophets with the message of calling humanity to the worship of one god so that is jesus in islam There is another question. Yes. Please see your name on the question, please. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Elise Oaks, and I'm a retired RN, and work together on certain projects. But let's continue to acknowledge our differences, and hopefully, I can bring you over to Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> So again as our neighbor as a fellow community member yourself and as a human being we 100% respect you right obviously respect starts from that point and as i mentioned in my presentation even though we have 65 to 70% commonalities we have the differences but this forum is not to debate on the differences but at least to inform you as our fellow american our fellow human that this is what we as muslims believe because our beliefs unfortunately islam is the most misunderstood faith in of all the faiths in the usa so at least if you if you know that our background you can appreciate your neighbors who are muslims right your friends your colleagues and the classmates so at least you can understand the common the commonalities that we have so we are not saying that you all convert to islam even though we desire that right <laughs> just like just like as you do right but there is no force in islam you know prophet muhammad peace be upon him peacefully proactively as a messenger of peace he used to invite people to islam there is no force in islam in fact the quran says chapter 2 verse number 256 la ikraha fi din there is no compulsion in faith but the disagreement that we may have yes we can educate about the about you know each other we can have a nice and friendly dialogue with each other but then we pray uh, to god for each other that's all we can do as humans right so do appreciate you coming over here and do appreciate you welcoming me to your faith but again just like one more comment on that see islam the word islam means submission to one god so we say that every single prophet every single messenger they submitted to one creator right Even Jesus by the way when he worshiped one god he was submitting to one god when he said not my will but the will of god right so when we submit to the will of god we say that person is a muslim second important footnote is this the word islam occurs many many times in the whole quran the word christianity occurs zero times in the whole bible so if you want to invite me to christianity it's not even there in the bible right and jesus never said i came to create a new uh, a faith in fact the very first time the word christian is mentioned in the bible it's not given by god not by jesus not by the followers not even by paul the very first time the word christian was given to the christians or the followers of christ is by the idol worshipers according to the fifth book of the new testament the book of acts chapter 12 verse number 26 when the disciples of christ when they went to the city of antioch the idol worshipers looking at the followers of christ they said here comes the christians that's when the word christian was given by the idol worshipers to the followers of christ but if you want to know what the word muslim comes in anyone who submits to the absolute oneness of god that person is called as a muslim so i thought to add that extra thing to make you think about islam inshallah 
Yes, sir. I'm Stan Jackson. I'm a consultant. And Dr. Seville, thank you very much for this presentation. Thank you. I, I think it was insightful. I, I think I like the unity that you uh, encourage. And so that I, I'm uh, very pleased with. Thank you. You quoted the Quran many times. You probably, did you get your doctorate in the uh, Quran? Uh, yes, also, yes. Okay. But also I have a medical degree too, by the way. Medical degree as well? Yes. So you got two doctorates? Yes. I'm impressed. Thank you. Very impressed. Thank you. But my encouragement is, there are four books I would encourage you to master since you are uh, a double doctor. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I heard you quote some of them, but I did not sense that you have mastered those books. You've mastered the Quran, but you haven't mastered the Gospels. And here's my basic question. Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he goes on and says, no one comes to the Father except through me. My encouragement for you is, and you don't even have to answer this, but look at those four Gospels and see, and I would encourage everyone here to do the same, look at those four Gospels and see who was speaking? Jesus. Who was he speaking to? And then, who was he speaking about? He was the one that made the promise through him we go to the Father. It's not through our works, not through our other efforts, but totally through Jesus. So, as it's been said, Jesus Christ is either whom he promised to be, whom he claimed to be, or he's a liar. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. By the way, <clears throat> I'm in the process of enrolling into PhD in Christianity. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> Why not? That includes Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. All right. <laughs> so next time when I come here, hopefully we can have dialogue on that topic. Good. Yeah, yeah. So since you quoted that passage, John chapter 14, verse number 6, I am the way, the truth and life. No one comes to the Father besides uh, me. Uh, I agree with that. Do you know that? You'll be surprised. I agree with that. We say that every single messenger, every single prophet was a door leading people towards the one God. So we say in the time of Moses, peace be upon him, he was the way to lead people towards the one God. In the time of Ishmael and Isaac and Solomon and David and Abraham and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they were the door to lead people towards one God. See, we agree with that. But if you look that passage in the context, Chapter 14, verse number 2, like four passages before that. An interesting video so far. Uh, the audience is quite elderly, but I'm enjoying the questions they're asking. The last guy talks about uh, what Jesus said, and I really do appreciate people that ask questions and actually uh, think the openness of the people that are asking the questions, you know. And it seems like he's really, he really enjoyed this session these guys had. Um, I cut it right by why he explains the context of what the elderly man quoted. And we'll see that in the second part of this. It's good to see the elderly interested in actually learning about something other than what they were um, raised in whether than what they were born in e.g. maybe the all Christians yeah so Christianity and I it re, it's quite rare to find elderly people that are willing to actually listen to, to new ideas or anything new uh, anyway uh, the second lady that spoke about um, forcing others to join Islam it's actually something that um, we see in the comments something that we out there and 
um, it seems like Christians feels, feel forced, maybe a new attempt to make them understand and let them know that it's actually optional to convert to Islam should be taken. Otherwise, um, don't ever feel forced to take up something that you're not ready to. But her contribution, as usual, no contribution goes to waste. Her contribution meant something in this session that we're having. Uh, so far, that's what I would love to touch on. So let's get to the second part of this. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it to the friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.